On today's show, it's mostly about products. We have road bikes, mountain bikes, some tools, some aero kit, and the welter bits you definitely missed. Hello, I'm Damien Roos, and welcome to the Quick Spin Cycling Digest. If you are new here, we gather all of the news and views from the internet, so you don't have to. Links are in the description below. Now, let's go. First up, I've got this one. If you haven't seen this yet, it is a must see. World champ Tom Pidcock posted some pictures and video on Instagram from a quick break where he rolled up to Corfu in his Porsche Cayman GT4 RS and proceeded to get on a boat and do this. He looks like a naughty kid, like he knows what he's about to do. He's super sketchy and he nails it. We don't get to see the aftermath. Oh, his head pops up at the back there. But man, look at him. He, this is like him in a nutshell. Oh. The Instagram post is captioned, work hard so you can play hard. And man, oh man, can we see what this means. Also, how about some things that caught my eye at the welter? More gum chewing. Maybe Jonas's real aero advantage is a beer belly after all, even though there is the mono boob there. I mean, chest fairing, radio thing. A Zwift sponsored Alpacin de Kunic using Trainer Road for warm up. Long fingered gloves in the warm up, must have been cold, or Remco in an ice bath. Oh, and how about a sports music recap? Third stage of the Vuelta España, first mountain stage of the race. What a scenery here to show you, the course will leave a trace. It's a promising breakaway with Kamna and Caruso trying for the win. If they get a pick enough lead, it's hard for the peloton to reel them in. Okay, we've got that out of our system. Let's flick through some news before we get into the gear. Wout Van Aert made a pit stop at the Huffelies round of the Gravel World Series, of course, finishing with a win of nine minutes ahead of the next rider. Cycling Weekly reports that while he will return to road racing at the Tour of Britain on September 3, after that, he's gonna turn his attention back to gravel to look at securing his fourth senior world title on October 8 in Italy. Wout saying, I expect a different field of participants at Worlds. Lachlan Morton, the rider that has been able to carve out the most unique career ever, was back in action at the Leadville Trail 100 mountain bike race. The big talk was about his bike. Well, probably just the stem more than anything else. And it got my attention when I saw this post from Break Epic with this slammed 120 millimeter stem. Believe it or not, this was actually more commonplace when 29ers first hit the bike scene. So I was thinking there must be a special reason for this setup and I was right. Here's Lachlan's mechanic talking about it on a race TV episode. So this is a very unique mountain bike race. I would say without the two big descents, it's almost a gravel race. So Lachlan's decided we're trying to go arrow here. So we got the FSA adjustable stem to get his position a little bit lower. And then we've actually trimmed these 700 millimeter handlebars down to 66 centimeters, just to get them a little bit narrower, a little bit lower, more aerodynamic. So it's all about aero, speed, trimmed handlebars. That is really a retro vibe. And how can you miss those bar ends? Is he gonna be setting some new trends from old things. By the way, check out sneaky number position here. Now check out Remco and Averpool's 6.8 kilogram specialized tarmac SL8 for the welter. It's right on the weight limit and it has a nice paint job. Not much more I can say that I didn't say when the SL8 came out. Specialized showed all of their hard work down at the Innovation Lab. So it's Trek's turn now to show us how they made their flagship bike, the Madone. Lots of pats on the back. We succeeded greatly in the way that we ended up accomplishing this project. After the tough job of making this bike better than the last one, and man, they had to look closely to make changes. Finally, Tyler Wiles and Mads Peterson must be so tired from riding so hard. A 
couple more places to stick your plugs. Crank Brothers F Series Multi Tools. There's two of them that they've released. And the thing that I like about these two options is the inclusion of a tire plug tool. We've talked about places to stick your plug before, but having everything together is really convenient, even if it's just a backup. Also, the magnetic case serves as a handle, providing easy access to the set of tools. And that's an idea that I would pay for. The F16 is more expensive at $59.99, and let me rattle off what's included for that price. Hex, two to eight millimeter, T25, Phillips screwdriver, standard screwdriver, tie plug tool, and three times plugs, chain tools, spoke wrenches, and then you get the F11 tool. It's $10 cheaper at $49.99 with everything the F16 has except for the chain tool and the spoke wrenches. Now, a new bidden to me called the Squeeze Easy rolls off the tongue nicely. A lot of cycling products are usually products looking for a problem, but this really seems to fix small annoying ones rather than big hairy ones. It fits one to three gels per bottle and you can access either water or gel. So you get to choose how much of the gel you take and when. The best reason to get it is probably no mess. The worst thing about this style of gel consuming though is the same as if you have gel flasks. You just don't know how much you've had. In a race, when your brain is not working, having to only count packets rather than swigs will have you eating closer to the right amount, I can guarantee that. So maybe it's good for training tool, but uh, not so much for racing. Now, Road CC reported on this aero base layer, and you might have seen the ribs on shoulders in the Pro Peloton. This one is designed for speeds over 50 kilometers or 30 miles per hour, and it comes from Rule 28 and is focused for road sprinters and track racers, so high speed racing. And this base layer is priced at £149.99, aligning with the brand's original aero base layer. Get them while they're still legal. Finally, in the social media rounds, I moved most of the social media stuff to elsewhere in today's episode, but there is a bit of a team crossover that kind of work, and it's Trek Little's visit to the supermarket. Little, of course, you know, look like wacky kids getting these funny products and doing the checkout in their cycling kit, but I guess it got me talking. And that's it. Our quick spin around the world of cycling. Ride well, and I will catch you next time.